I need you to know that he had to give up omnipotence. He had all power. And he said, if that's the price I got to pay to get my friend back, take it. He had omniscience. He knew everything. But he said, if that's the price I've got to pay to get my friend back, it's a small price after all. You call people friends that won't even waste the gasoline to pick you up to take you to church. I'm trying to tell you who your friend is. He's not a friend of the religious elite. No, 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 he had a different message for them. He called them snakes and vipers and turned their tables over in the temple. He had no message for them. He said, I did not come to look for them. I came to find the harlots and the destitute, the broken and the bruised, the lonely, the disconnected, the disenfranchised. Can I tell you that it proved his friendship? Not just by his incarnation. Now the old folk, you say it this way. If it looks like a duck, if it quacks, like a duck and waddles like a duck it's probably a duck you can know a person by the associations that they keep i got to talk about jesus Good God Almighty, I know it's three minutes of 12, but I got to talk about Jesus. Ah, somebody, somebody's got to know. Yeah, yeah. He didn't come to hobnob with Mr. Big Bucks. He did not ask for your pedigree. He was a friend of publicans and sinners. He would go out of his way to get to like metal drawn by magnet so was the son of god to the suffering bleeding needs of helpless humanity with spiritual radar he seemed to be able to zero in exactly where they needed him He was walking along one day and they said to him, Master, you've obviously made a mistake. If you keep going the way you're going, you're going to end up in Samaria. Lord, you know you can't go there. They're filthy dogs. It's an offense answerable by stoning for a Jew like you to even go into that little Samaritan slum. That ain't no place for you. I just can't hardly imagine how Jesus must have felt 
having come from the pavilions of God's heaven, when the disciple and came to earth, and then the disciples going to look at him and say, you ought not be in a place like that. Don't go to Samaria. They'll stone you. Your life will be in peril. I got to go. I got to go somewhere. I got to, I got to go. And when he got there, he sent the disciples away. And he sat down on a well. And here directly come a woman. A filthy, dirty Samaritan woman of whoredoms. She'd had five husbands. And the one she's with now is not a husband either. Let's not talk much about her. She's a woman of bad reputation. And the disciples said, why are you going to Samaria? Is there a king there? Is there a person of royalty there? Is there somebody that's got a lot of money they can donate to our ministry? Why are you going to Samaria? <laughs> I got an appointment uh, with a little Samaritan slut. Excuse me. I got to get there. I got to get where he sent me to go. There's a little woman over there. She don't look like much now, but she's about to get called to the ministry as the first New Testament evangelist. God said I'm about to anoint her. God said I'm about to lay my hands on her when ain't nobody else will touch her. I'm glad to be serving a God that'll wrap his arms around my stinky flesh when won't nobody else have nothing to do with me. I'm trying to preach in this house. She left that encounter and went screaming, come and see a man that told me everything I've ever done. Oh, but let's climb on up a little higher on the socioeconomic ladder. Let's go on now down the road. We'll find a man, just a little old man probably was about two-thirds bald, had some little round spectacles because he was all the time dealing with numbers. Just a short-statured little man, looked kind of like a CPA at the tax firm. Help me, somebody. Looked kind of like an I, uh, internal revenue service agent, and that he was. His name was Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus said, you working me too hard, boy. Zacchaeus said, I ain't ready yet. Zacchaeus said, I got to go take me a look at a preacher. I think I climb up in this tree. I better not say nothing because they said I heard that woman from Samaria say he could tell you everything you'd ever done. I'm a thief. I put the face of the poor and grind them down into the dirt. I take more taxes than I'm supposed to take and I put it in my own pocket. I better be quiet when this man's around. So we climbed up your Bible said into a sycamore tree and just sitting up there being real quiet. But Zacchaeus didn't need to call because when the master come by, he had a magnet that was attracted to Zacchaeus metal. God said, I didn't come to call the righteous, but sinners under repentance. I'm trying to talk about the sinner's best friend. I wish I had somebody that could help me just a little. Can you hear the Savior say, Hey, Zacchaeus, come on down. 
somebody this morning hiding out in a sycamore tree thinking you better just slip in here and be quiet lest they find out what you've been up to. Can I tell you he came by this way just to talk to you. Zacchaeus come down. I'm coming to your house for dinner. Sit down. I'm tired of church that want to check your pedigree before they let you in the door. I'm tired of churches that'll only let you in if you got the right kind of suit and the right balance at the bottom of your checkbook. I'm tired of a church that won't let you in if you got a little bit of body odor cause you've been sleeping down in the homeless shelter. Can I tell you what I feel like today? I feel like the burning torch set up on top of the Statue of Liberty that says bring us your disenfranchised, bring us your huddled masses, bring us those disconnected and yearning to breathe free. Let me tell you something, little girl that's found yourself pregnant out of wedlock, that your so-called mom and daddy have disowned you and you become an embarrassment to the church. Let me tell you where we're located. 4595 Gender Road in Columbus, Ohio. If you want to get into contact with a friend of sinners, these doors swing on welcome hinges. Come on in if they won't have you. Come on in if they've pushed you down, if they've held you back, if they've held you under. God is ready to accept you in the beloved. Hey, God, God. Somebody get on your feet and praise him. That he loved you when nobody else could love you. That he helped you when nobody else could help you. That when they gave up on you, he picked up on you. you but I'm like Zacchaeus I didn't go looking for him he came searching for me somebody said I found the Lord you didn't know where to look he leaped out of eternity and leaped into this planet because he had an appointment with you this morning good God Almighty if it didn't prove it to you by his incarnation and his association, could he prove it, prove it to you by his preaching? Good God Almighty, I'd have loved to have been there that day. I'd have loved to have been there that day when he preached. He that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. there that day when it preached come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden I will give you rest I'd love to have been there that day and heard him preach Sitting on the Mount of Olives, looking down through the Kidron Valley and up into the ancient city of Jerusalem where the prophets spoke of his coming. I love to see those tears as he preached as no man could preach. 
Jerusalem, Jerusalem. At the time I would have gathered you together under my wings as a hen doth the chicks. But you've rejected me. God, I'd have loved to have been there that day. When he preached that masterpiece, three point sermon in Luke chapter 15, he started off talking about a little woman. She didn't have much, peas don't mean much. Let's say your peas. She had just a few coins. And she'd lost them. Not much value to anybody else. But oh, how precious to their owner. I can see it. She swept the house. She can't find it. She's crawling now. Her knees are splintered. She's looking at every crack and every crevice. Bleeding, he crawled. Exhausted, he fell. If we could have asked him, Sir, you're the Son of God. How is it that we see you? In this posture today, because I'm sure his response would have been just like that little woman. I'm looking for something. It don't mean much to you. You may not mean much to this world. There may be nobody planning to even come to your funeral. But my God today, he went crawling up Calvary's hillside, looking under every crevice. He would say to us, you have to understand that they're hiding in here. They're afraid of me. They're ashamed. They don't want me to find them. But I've got to find them. Because you have to understand. I can't live without them. Oh. I have only now brought you to the edge of the stream and allowed you to dip your toes in and get ready to swim. He proved his friendship by his incarnation that God would come and become a man by his association. By his preaching, by his prayer in the garden under a full Passover moon, it's Jesus alone again, praying until his sweat became great drops of blood. On his cross with those who crucified him standing around his prayer. Father, forgive them. 
They don't even know what they're doing. Oh, but alas. Your Bible says he made his grave with the wicked. He said they're dead and dying. And I refuse to allow them to go through it alone. And so the ringing of the hammer was heard. Nails parted sinew and flesh and muscles jerked and quivered in horrible spasms of agony. Jesus. As they bid him not to go to Samaria, the angel shook that wooden beam and he said, Now come down. It's enough. No. Eli, Eli, Lama, Sabak, then I. Greater love hath no man than that he would lay down his life for his friends. My agony, my pain, my sin. I deserved hell. I deserved eternal punishment. I deserved banishment. But because he could not live without me, he tasted death for me. But he did not leave his story there. Because he proved his friendship by his ascension. He was not sleeping in that grave. Your Bible said he invaded the smoke-filled corridors of the doomed and the damned and led your captivity captive Oh, my troubadour. Oh, my champion. Oh, my king. Oh, my warrior. Up from the grave, he arose. The keys of death and hell and the grave see him ascending now surely now he's paid the price he's done the deed surely now that hell's curse is broken death is swallowed up in victory and the grave is left whimpering like a sick kitten. Surely now, he can take off this vesture of friendship and lay it down and pick up his royal diadem and clothe himself in the glory of his own power Lift up your heads, O oh ye gates. Be lifted up, ye everlasting doors. For the King of glory 
shall come in. But his chest did not swell because those milky white pearly gates of ethereal beauty swung open to him. May I remind you, they had never been closed to him. It was you and you and you and you and you and you and me that stood outside that celestial city. His chest did not swell because he was allowed entrance. No, no. He made a way because he wasn't just about ready to go nowhere. My pastor, Dr. Summerhall, was my friend. We were to, at the National Religious Broadcasters Association in Washington, D.C. The President of the United States was speaking that day, for which you had to have a ticket months in advance. I had no ticket, nor could I even purchase one. My pastor had been sent a complimentary ticket due to his prestige around the world. They were lined up for hours to get in for an audience with the President. Guards standing by the door. Brother Summerall took me by the hand, walked to the front of the line. He never would stand in a line. Walked to the front of the line over 80 years of age, said, excuse me. Yes, sir. Mr. Summerall, your ticket, please. Just a moment. Where's his ticket? Excuse me? He's with me. And someday, someday, when I approach that celestial city built four square, someday when I'm ready to cross Jordan's swelling tide and I'm at the gate and the porter asks for my ticket, standing by that gate with nail scarred hands will be my troubadour, will be my savior. He'll simply say, excuse me, he's with me. Everyone standing. I don't know. No one moving in reverence to the Holy Ghost. If he did not leave you, on his way to that cross he will not leave you now your husband may have divorced you your wife may have walked out the door preachers may have forsaken you the doctors may have told you you have to die and cannot live why you may have trampled the blood of this Savior under your feet. You may have damned his name. You may have criticized his saints. But he will not leave you. Like a magnet drawn to metal, so is the love of God drawn to you now. What will you do with the love of Jesus, the sinner's best friend? One of the greatest preachers that ever lived. The great Leonard Ravenhill. 
the author of the powerful Why Revival Tarries, was in a service with his late pastor. He had preached to a crowd of thousands as I have preached today. He preached of the unfailing, undying love of a Savior who because he could not live without you, died and rose again to buy your back. He opened the altar and said, Come unto him, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. A few people responded. Broken hearted, he left the service and came back the next night. He preached of the wrath of God. All of God's wrath condensed into a cup too bitter for mortal tongue to taste was drained of its utmost dregs by the loving lips of Jesus. He paid it all. On the second night, that great preacher preached of the wrath of God and of judgment to come, of a place of the swallowing, billowing waves of eternal fire called hell. Before he could even finish his message, they began to run to the altars. The preacher commanded, stop and stay where you are. And walked off that platform. The crowd in astonishment and amazement said, what's wrong? They bid him come back. He stood to those thousands and said, Last night I shared with you the love of Christ, and you spurned it. And now tonight, because of the fear of peril, you desire to cry out to God. And said the preacher, If his love won't save you, if you can't grasp his love for you, his wrath and fear will never save you. I don't know what you've done. I don't know where you've been. But here's the truth I have for you today. Jesus loves you. your best friend and today he bids you come 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 lay hold on that which I have purchased for you with my own blood break the chains and be free and run from your captors strangled hold into my loving embrace let me give you eternal life and a home in heaven every head bowed every eye closed no one looking around across this vast auditorium thousands of people tens of thousands watching by radio hundreds of thousands by radio and television together here's the question what will you do with the love of god mercy is preaching in this pulpit but judgment stands just off stage you say, but I'm bound by alcohol, he loves you. But I'm bound by divorce, he loves you. But I've murdered my own baby in abortion, he loves you. But I don't know where I'm going, he loves you. But I don't know what my future holds, he loves you. But I've cursed his name, he loves you. But I've damned his name, he loves you. But I've criticized his church, he loves you. He loves you, 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 he loves you. 
I'm going to count to three and when I say three you want to know the love of God and be freed from the bondage of hell you want to know you're on your way to heaven as surely as you know you're in this building this morning you want to feel the love of God in your cold dry aching heart I'm talking to backsliders you're away from God you've walked away from his bleeding cross but this morning he's calling you home and you know it he's calling you home and you know it oh you can run into the loving embrace of a crucified lamb you can do it this morning he loves you the devil is a liar Satan I bind you I bind your lie there is therefore now no condemnation we are free to say yes to the God that loves us when I say three you want to go to heaven and not hell serve God and not the devil have life and not death and blessing and not cursing you shoot your hand up in the air and we're going to pray on this resurrection day on this day when hell's chains were broken forever all that God is waiting for is for you to say yes on three shoot that hand up in the air do it now eternity waits for no one tomorrow we may be in heaven you may be in hell this is your opportunity Christians pray pray in the name of Jesus Satan your power is broken loose every captive by the power of God this is it on three and we're going to pray you'll be as sure for heaven as if you were already there I'm counting one two three lift that hand and leave it up as quickly as you can with your hand raised every person get out into the nearest aisle come to this altar and meet me now come on come on all over this building with your hand raised come on come on from the back of the building we're waiting on you what a day. What a day to say yes to Jesus. Celebrating his resurrection from the dead. Come on. He wants to give you life and that abundantly. Your Bible says the thief came not but for to kill and to steal and to destroy. But I came that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Church, put your hands together. They're backed up all the way down every aisle. Put your hands together and celebrate that today the love of God is triumphed. Right now as you're watching my television all over America, around the world, the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. You haven't known love. Your father hasn't loved you. Your friends haven't loved you. Your husband hasn't loved you. Your wife hasn't loved you. I challenge you now to go to your phone and pick up that phone. Dial that number on your screen. Accept the love of Jesus today. Let him break your chains and set you free. Today is your day of victory. Come on, are you coming? All the way back to the aisles, they're still coming. Come on, church, you act like you're half asleep. These people are breaking their chains. These people are saying yes to God. No to the devil. I need some help in here. I need some help in here to let these people come. Let them come. Come on, still coming, still coming. I thought I heard a resurrection shout of victory. Come on. Come on. Still coming, still coming, still coming, still coming. Still coming. Can somebody help me? Can somebody help me? Here they're coming. There they're coming. There they're coming. There they're, coming. They're, they're still coming. Somebody shout like he's alive. Are you coming? This is the last verse. Here they're coming. There. This is it. 60 seconds and we're going to pray. If you're coming, come now. Do it now. Do what your heart wants to do. Don't try to reason it in your mind. Do it now. Come on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Still coming. Nine, ten. Still coming. Come on. time. Get in while there's time. While the door swings open. It's time to reap the harvest now. Hear me. 
for the religious the door is slammed shut but for the sinner God always sets the door just slightly ajar there's room there's room at the cross for you we're going to sing at the direction of the Holy Spirit we're going to sing one verse of this song I'm going to give you one more opportunity to make the decision you'll be glad you made when you stand before God in eternity I want you to make sure everybody around you is ready to go to heaven somebody's just waiting on a husband a wife a friend a brother a sister to say I'll go with you if you want to pray do it now you can break the chains at the end of this verse we're praying in a few moments this service will be history you may be getting your last chance you may be hearing his voice for the last time come on honey come on Come on, darling, come, come on. Come on, love's about to turn your life around. Love's about to turn your life around. God's not mad at you. He's not mad at you. He'll never be angry with you again. Come on, here they're coming there. Here they're coming there. Here they're coming and there. And there they're coming. There they're coming. Somebody let the Lord know how thankful you are for his love. Still coming. Still coming. Come on. Come on. Still coming from the back. Here they're coming and there they're coming. My God, church, where's your joy? Where's your victory? Come on, come on, come on, come on, you made it, you made it, you made it. They're still coming. Can we thank God for this beautiful Hallelujah. Resurrection Day harvest? Hallelujah. We're going to pray. I just I just I just want to know all of you I want to I want to know your story I want to know what he brought you from World Harvest Church thank you when Zion travails when Zion comes to Wednesday night when they don't feel like it when Zion fasts when they don't feel like it. When the church prays when they don't feel like it. When the choir is faithful when they don't feel like it. This is the result. Now we're going to pray. And it's real simple. It's not complicated. Because I'm not asking you to join this church. I'm not asking you to join an organization. All I'm asking you to do is open up your heart and allow Jesus Christ to forgive you, 
and to give you eternal life. He's going to do that simply because we asked him to. And the Bible says he's not a man that he should lie. Pray with me now out loud so you can hear it with your own ears. Heavenly Father, I come to you today. I was born in sin, in iniquity. My mother conceived me. My sin has separated me from your love. And today, I come to ask your forgiveness and to receive your mercy. I have heard today that your love knows no boundaries. So I invite you now, come into my heart. Give me eternal life. Take the Lordship of my life. I give it freely. Satan, I renounce you. You're not my God. You lied to me. You told me he couldn't love me. And you're a liar. And I renounce you. Lord Jesus Christ, I accept you. I believe in you. And I confess you as my personal Savior. I'm going to live for you as you show me how. And I fully intend to go to heaven. Thank you, Jesus. First thing a newborn baby does is shout. Now your Bible says, with the heart man believes, but with the mouth confession is made to salvation. The first thing you're required to do for all that Jesus has done for you is turn around and tell somebody, I'm going to heaven whether you like it or not. Jesus is my Savior. Somebody give him a great hand clap ovation and praise. Mary, this is Mary Cunningham. She is my adopted grandmother, and she has been employed by this church as long as anybody. And 15 years ago, now she looks right now like she did then. Does she? Where's Ravella? She, she had to go back. She looks just now like she did then, except she's prettier. And 15 years ago, with the news media waiting on me to find out what God wasn't going to do so they could report it, Mary Cunningham walked from the side of the building over on Wright Road and handed me a little white piece of paper. Amen. And we've been doing it for 15 years ever since then, Mary. Every year. <laughs> now, I'm not sure I can properly decipher this, so if somebody can come and help me, things have become more populated or more complicated as the years have gone by. 1998, 1999. Is this? Oh, this is where, okay. Okay, okay. This is this, is this year. Okay. All right. All right. Now then. I have made a decision this year that since it is the Lord's day and since no one would stay home from God's house on Sunday night of Easter, that I will give you the total tonight. Oh, okay. I do want to say, I do want to say two things. Number one, historically for 15 years, the total has grown 
because we get mail in late. Last year, the total grew, I think, about, let's see, total, total it grew. Last year, in the week after Easter, the resurrection seed offering grew $300,000 because folks mail coming in late. But on, and the other thing that I wanted to share with you is that this year I shared with a Wednesday night service. I didn't share with anyone, everyone else. But our largest network that we preach on Breakthrough, they had a policy change. And they, for whatever reason, would not show the programming of the teaching of Resurrection Seed. Last year, that two weeks of teaching brought nearly $3 million on that network, and they would not, we couldn't do that this year. Okay? So I've been walking around with a $3 million load of faith to believe for that that source, like, like Elijah by the brook Cheereth, the ravens stopped bringing the bread and flesh. And I've been carrying that $3 million load for about four weeks now, believing. And I'm about to give you a miracle. First of all, last year, the Resurrection Seed Tour that I went out and gathered the seed was $340,000. This year, it was $553,000. That's a 62% increase. Breakthrough having sustained a severe blow. It, it would be no different than I'm only allowed to talk about Resurrection Seed to this group of the congregation they can't hear anything about it, the rest of it. That's what happened to Breakthrough. And last year, they, on Easter Sunday morning, I announced from Breakthrough $2,800,555. Two million eight. This year, having sustained that blow, $2,320,000. But something, something done happened in here in this local church. Last year, the total local church, 1,019,000. This year, 1,255,000. That's a 23% increase year over year. The grand total last year, 4,160,000. This year, 4,130,000. I think you better start thanking God. I don't, no, you don't patty cake at over $4 million. You don't patty cake. No, 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 no. And that's the seed. Wait till you see the harvest. I dare you to throw your hands up in the air and shout, it's time for my harvest. It's time for my harvest. Now, now, now. Back up, devil. Now praise God like you know it's coming. said, praise him like you know it's coming. Yes, 
If somebody wants to make up that $30,000, we'd be glad to accept your check. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We did have, and I, I think I'd be remiss if I didn't share this with you. We did have two checks this year. One for $50,000 in the local church. Another one check, $200,000. One check. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. And I, 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 I'll not share any more about it than this, but I, I can share with you that one came from a single, a, a precious black lady, single mom, raising several children, $50,000. Another came from a lady that was living at some points in her car, that was living at some points in an apartment without a single piece of furniture in the apartment. less than two years ago who has sown a seed of 200,000. I'm telling you, there's a transfer. The wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just and you better get to telling the devil you come to get your stuff. Hallelujah. Now, in just a moment, I'm going to dismiss. Now, hear me. This is Easter. It is 10 minutes of 1. That's what time it is. Okay, your ham is fine. Tonight at 7 o'clock, I am going to be here, and we are going to have a time. The elders have communion ready. We may want to break bread together and share the bread and share the cup of the Lord tonight. Well, let's, let's everybody be here tonight on this Easter Sunday, for heaven's sake. Let's be here. Now, those of you who are at the altar, how are we doing this, Roland? We're, we're dividing like Moses. Your friends and family will wait on you. It will only take a moment. Jesus went all the way to that cross for you. You can take a few steps into the prayer room for him and receive some literature. You can do that. Part right here. Thank you. Part. 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 Thank you. This group is going this way. This group is going this way. But before you go, I've already done it once, but I'm going to do it again. I have released my faith toward your seed for your most supernatural harvest. It is imperative in the next few days that you rejoice incessantly over your harvest. Don't you be coming around here saying, well, I didn't get a return. You better go to rejoicing and thanking God for your harvest. Amen? Those of you on this side are going to go to the prayer room this way. It'll only take a few moments. Those of you on this side are going to go to the prayer room this way. It'll only take a few moments. We love you. God bless. You know what? Can we just hold where we are so they can get to the prayer room before we dismiss? I think if we had a little bit of ride on King Jesus, ride on, we could do that.